All right. TJ DeFalco, man. It's good to have you on the show. Appreciate you taking time. I know you're, you're busy with all the quarantine going on right now, but uh, it's crazy how it's like up and down and up and down. It's like every week is some new mandate or whatever. I mean, geez, when are we going to ever get it under control? It almost feels like things don't go back to normal until sometime they figure out the vaccine, right? And then everyone stops freaking out if there's a vaccine. But it's just right now, it's just crazy time. Yeah. Yeah, you know, what happens when you open up a little too early, get too optimistic, and then all of a sudden it hits again, and we got two, three, four, five, six waves of it, and it's just yeah. it's one of those stalemates almost. Typical Americans, right? We give like a t- tiny little half inch, and then everybody takes like a mile. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking time, man. It's uh, you know I met for the first time. I don't even know if you remember. It was really quick last year at Six Man when. Uh, when it was normal right and you guys yeah. you guys were playing i was playing with the old guys which is super fun but uh it was the first time i'd ever played six man actually i've had people talk to me for i don't even know how long 20 years trying to get me to play six man and it just never worked out and yeah. then finally you know talking with casey adams and jared starling and those guys and they're like you gotta come play and i'm like all right i'll, I'll come play but yeah. the problem for me was is so i have uh I'm a, I'm a management consultant. So I'm, you know, I've got a business job. It takes up, it's full time. I, I don't get to play very much anymore. And, and then, so I went down there and I hadn't played much at all. And I'm like, Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to get back into shape really quick. So cause yeah. the, the sand, the sand at Huntington was not treating me kindly. So yeah, <laughs> yeah man, the six man tournament's a blast. Oh, it's fun. Super fun. It's, and now I know why people wanted me to play so bad because it's just it's just a good vibe down there, and it's absolutely it's yeah, just cool. yeah. Um, give me give me just a general sense because I don't know your story very much. Give me a general sense of when and why you kind of first got into volley growing up, and a little bit about about your backdrop. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I'm from a farm out in Missouri. That's where my family hails from, and there's yeah. seven kids. And Typical two- volleyball, right? A farm in Missouri. It's where everybody's kind of from, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we were out there doing that kind of thing. My parents played volleyball back in college and kind of played the recreational kind of side of things. Um, every once in a while, we go to, like, the YMCA. That was the really young days. And then we moved out to California because my dad's business was on the fiber optics wave. Huh. Back when we were trying to get internet to everyone, and that was a big wave back then. So we came out to California and my older sister is right above me. She started playing club volleyball. And so I was the, I was too young to stay at home, too young to go to any like friend's house, something like that. So I'd always get dragged onto her practices or her club tournaments, stuff like that. How old were you then? I was probably 10, 11. Oh, okay. And so I was just a kid that would hit the ball against the wall for six hours straight or, you know, just just over and over and over. And that's how I kind of got the, the feel for it and then when I turned 13 I started playing club and it just took off from there yeah how many brothers and sisters do you have I have four sisters and two brothers oh wow you guys got a big family we got our own team that's cool <laughs> do, they, do they all kind of play a little bit oh, yeah. the whole family no way that's cool yeah it's kind of my story. I mean, my older brother, John, first was playing. I was much more in a basketball typical story, right? And then he's like, hey, I need you to play, start playing so I can beat up on you a little bit. And yeah. <laughs> I was the same age almost. I was like 10 or 11. I didn't even – I didn't know anything about volleyball. But then we, <laughs> we went in our backyard. We had a basketball hoop. And then we had like a pergola that was attached to our house. And so we yeah. literally just hung a string to our yeah. basketball hoop to the pergola. And that was our net. And we would just be out there – I don't know. We'd pepper for like four hours. I bet my mom loved it because it's like, hey, at least you guys are out of the house. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I read that you, you that while you were in Missouri, you guys raised exotic animals. What did, I read that somewhere. What, is that, what did that look like? Yeah, we, uh, I mean, so some of those stories that you probably read were from my high school days and I always like to stretch the imagination because, you know, I, I was young for that time period, but I think the exotic animals that the, every year reading that we raised were emus. So uh-huh. no one had really known what that was. And uh, that's definitely an odd animal to have, you know, on your farm. But yeah, we raised emus and we, uh, we, we um, crowd them or whatever. So that was probably the thing you read. What did you do with the emus? I'm just, it's just, it's fascinating. Yeah. We raised raise them? them and would you, would you like sell them or? Uh, I, I'm sure my dad did some of the selling, but we actually, 
um, butchered them, and they were uh-huh. amazing meat. We we used oh, to make really? jerky. You know, we had they do humano yeah. or whatever jerky steaks. You know, anything. It was really good tender meat. Huh? Never yeah. had either. <laughs> yeah, and what's uh, well, someone else's or what nobody else really knows is their eggs are like this. Oh, really? That's so like, a, it's like massive. Ma- it's like na- nineteen twenty eggs, like normal chicken yes. eggs, in one egg. Holy cow! Yeah. And were they? I mean, would you? Would you eat the egg too? I mean, was it good? Oh yeah, cool. Because yeah. my family was so big, it's like 10, 11 people in a house back then. We just scramble huh. up two of them, and we have eggs for everybody. No way. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> when I when I read Exotic Animals, I was thinking Tiger King. Did you watch Tiger King? Oh, uh, I've seen a couple episodes. That's all I could take of that. Yeah, it's it's an interesting one. I actually, before they came out with it on Netflix, there's a um, they had a podcast of the whole the whole story. It was a series podcast series. And I, and I, I'd gotten into it. Someone showed me, showed it to me and I got into it. And then I saw that they came out with the actual Netflix doc. And so I already knew the whole story, but I felt like the podcast was a little bit more digestible just because you're not seeing everything. And it's just, what a, what a wacky story. It's crazy. All the ups and downs of that whole situation. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So, so you come to Cali and you get into volleyball and, and, um, you know, whatever you play in high school, play club, all that good stuff. And then you decide to go to Long Beach. Describe some of your favorite mem- memories during your time at, at Long Beach. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's probably favorite. quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, one of my f- probably most memorable memories was losing, going to the final four my freshman year and then going back my sophomore year and losing to the mm-hmm. same team, oh. like, the same exact way. Um, and just that feeling afterwards in that locker room, just sitting there with all my teammates and just breaking down that I, I was like, dude, I don't want to feel this ever again. And so that's when it flipped for me over summer was just grind time. You know, there was no off time of summer. It was grind and then get into fall and just put in the work. And uh, all my teammates from the prior year had that same mindset. And we yeah. came in ready to steamroll teams in my junior year, which was that year was the – changing point for that mindset I guess for all of us even the staff included and that was something I'll remember for all 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 the time yeah it's interesting what what losing can can do on the beneficial side you know what I mean it's like who knows what even happens in your career if you if you don't lose those matches maybe become complacent I don't know who knows what what happens but um that's interesting yeah so tell us so who's the team in your first two years that you lost to you both times BYU both times? Oh, man. Was that with, uh, who, was that with Taylor or was that even post-Taylor? Uh, that, was, well, that was after Taylor's. It was Brendan. Brendan was on oh, that. Oh, Brendan. Yeah. yeah. Brendan so, the, I mean, it's a good, they had a good team. Their team was nuts, yeah. Yeah. But then, but then I, wasn't those, those are the years that Ohio State was really good, right? That was the back-to-back years for Ohio State. Holy cow. I remember watching those games and just thinking, like, who are these guys? They're just bombing balls. Like, they were just ripping serves and, and no one was missing. And I was like, dude, if BYU, if they can't pass, this, this game's going to be over quick. And yeah, the two actually ended up being pretty quick. Nuts. So, yeah. Well, good for you guys. Yeah. Taking two back to back. That's, that's pretty special, man. It's, you know how it is. It's not easy to win a national championship and to do back to back is, is, is a pretty cool thing. Something that, yeah. you know, no one can ever take away. It's always great to be a champion. Exactly. Thank you. So, so then you kind of transition, um, moving on to kind of the next level, getting into the national team. Just tell me what you've learned so far, tr- trying to go to that next level as you're, you're in the gym with the national team. I mean, obviously we're talking about pre-COVID and all the craziness and not being able to, to, to practice with the team now, but what, yeah. what's the biggest things you've learned kind of going into the next level? Um, what's been really, really, um, kind of a blessing for me is that I had the opportunity to go into the national team gym and kind of see that level and all that kind of stuff. My junior year of high school, Mm. I was every summer I was in, you know, uh, my junior year, that was the year that Reed was hurt. So he was uh, back early from pro season. And during the high school season, I'd go two practices a day where I practice high school and then I head to the gym and practice with those guys. So I'd get a bunch of reps with Reed. (laughs) Oh, to be young. Oh yeah. (laughs) Only way I could have done that. Um, so I, I, I learned a lot of stuff every single summer when I got to go in. Um, I mean, man, that in the beginning, it was know your role, know your job. You're the young and you're the youngest guy that's ever been in the gym. You need to just kind of sit back and take your licks a little bit. 
Um, and then that over time, it, it became more of a, you know, you've been here long enough, you've started and you just start taking, you know, asking questions, you know, yeah. find out what these guys do and try to replicate it into my game, even with mental and physical stuff, you know, the, mm-hmm. the weight room was a big thing too, the shift because high school was high school. No one really lifts in high school, you know? Right. Um, so shifting from high, high school to college, that was like one of the big things that the national team gym taught me is, dude, you have to lift your, your butt off to be able to, you know, continue to get better. And so yeah. that's probably the main thing that I learned for sure. Yeah, getting getting the reps in the gym, but also in the weight room too, because, you know, the work that you're doing in the weight room also is adding just life onto the career, right? Because, I mean, if you're slacking off in the weight room, eventually that's going to catch up to you. And and um, so it's, yeah, it's cool that you were able to get in there so early and and even learn a little bit from Reed, who had obviously been there for a while and could probably pass some things along. So tell me, what what are you personally working on right now in your game as you think about your game right now what do you feel like you need to be working on even as you go play professionally getting ready for Tokyo trying to get on the team make the team be a staple on the team what do you feel like you you need to be focusing on yourself uh I mean especially because this quarantine definitely lifting and getting back in shape (laughs) (laughs) amen it is all (laughs) um uh no it's just it's still continuing to uh know my role because I'm not, I, I can't jump 54 inches or whatever Sander is right now. I can't do some of those things that those six ten. I can't be six ten, you know? Um, so it's about lifting and knowing my role and getting as good as I can every single day. Um, yeah. And so taking that one day at a time, cause it's hard to get uh, every once in a while you get caught up in the, in the moment thing. And you're like, dude, I want to, I want to make the team. This is a eight month away goal. And I want right. to be there now, you know, and it, you can't, and I get myself caught up in that sometimes. <laughs> You got to just take it day by day and just do as much as you possibly can in one day hmm. to reset the next day. What have been some of the biggest surprises for you as you've kind of gone on trips, competed in the bigger tournaments, competed against the other teams in the world? Was there anything that you were like, whoa, like, I mean, this is, this is big time. Anything that stands out to you as you're trying to like, you know, be up there with the other teams? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that definitely surprised me right away was the amount of knowledge and IQ that people have at such an early age because mm. all they have is really pro leagues. Like you hear in Europe a lot, mostly Italy, the kids are going professional and playing at their, their club level, Division Two, maybe, at like 16, 17. Right, right. And they have that international experience. They have those, you know, shot repertoire or just overall IQ of like, this guy's going to do this. And uh, coming out of college, you know, this last, last summer – um, or two summers ago, it was completely different for me to play in college guys all the time and going to the national team playing these guys that have been playing pro since they're 18 or 19, you know, and have the, the, the calm. They, the, Cause they're calm when they step on the court in front of 7,000 people, international people that don't speak the same language as you, you know, right. lefts don't speak the same language as you, all this kind of stuff that is just completely different. And they have, they already have that built up. And I, this is my first year, you know, so hmm. that was definitely a spin. Yeah. So you played, you played last season in Italy, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you played, you played for Vivo. Vivo. How'd you like it down there? Oh, I loved it. It was, it was amazing. So, so the way my team set up is they're in Vivo and my team also owns a resort about 20 minutes out in the middle of farmlands. And yeah. that resort was on a hill and looked over a bay on the Mediterranean. And that's oh, where cool. I, it was amazing. Yeah. I go to That's practice. where you lived? Yeah. I oh, lived wow. In- that's nice. Yeah. So, it, I mean, it was the perfect situation because I was out in the middle of farms where it was like, there's no city, there's no city life at all really there because it's a small yeah. town. So I drive in and just hang out at the ocean or the sea, sorry. Hey, get my yeah. teammates get mad at me when I call it the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it's very bad. Italian of them. Yeah, yeah. Are they, is it still um, Vivo Valencia, Tona Calipo? Yeah. Oh, so they're, so do you like tuna? Oh, yeah. I love yeah. it. Yeah. The, 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 the Vivo, the, the Calippo tuna is really good too. It comes in the jar with the. Yeah. Look, you get the one, oh man. It's oh, phenomenal. Man, it, I love that's it. tasty stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. That's cool. Cause that, cause Reed played there. I, I think. Did you know that Reed played there? I knew Matt played there. Matt and Ben yeah. are the ones I knew played there, but I didn't know. Yeah. Reed I'm pretty there. sure Reed played there way back, way back when as well. So I played seven years in Italy, all in the North, but, um, really enjoyed my time because the league is just the volleyball is just so good and um you know it's just it's it's just a cool opportunity so you're going back to Vibo same team yeah yeah pretty soon here um 
how do you guys feel like the team set up? You know, have they have they got some new pieces? How'd you guys do last year? Are you pretty excited about where you're going and how how it's going to go? Yeah, definitely. I'm excited. Um, we got some new pieces. Um, last season was it was interesting. It was an interesting dynamic because we had three or four guys that were like 22, 23, 24, and then three of our starters were like 35, 30, mm. 34, 35. So it was that dynamic of, hey, I'm older than you. I have more experience than you and everything, uh, blah, 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 blah. But then the younger guys were trying to be like, listen, I've, I have, I'm here for a reason. I'm, I'm good at what I do. Listen to what I have to say, blah, blah, blah. And it was just butting heads all the time. Um, and so we had a hard time meshing sometimes with team dynamic. Um, and our coach didn't really help us with that, you know, because that's the classic European coach. But, yeah. you know, it was a learning experience for me for sure. Coming into that, this is so off dynamic every which way and learning how to just control myself, what I can control and just staying centered. So it was a really good learning experience. And I'm excited to go back and, you know, kind of see the fan base in a different mindset. You know, see the, the league. Cause the league is going to be crazy next year. Everyone's spending a lot of money getting good guys. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited to go back. That's cool. Really cool. Um, how, how do you enjoy the travel there and just kind of experiencing Italy? Because to me, everyone asked me, because I played in Italy, I played in Turkey, I played in Poland, I played in Russia. And they always ask me, where was your favorite place to play? And I'm like, well, I mean, it's, it's hard to like pick against Italy. It's just a great place to live. Yeah. How has it been just kind of because Vibo is all the way down in the south. Well, at least, you know, it's sort of down in the south. And so when you travel, do you guys do you guys fly or do you take a bus? There was only one time that we took a bus because we're so far. Like you said, we're about an yeah. hour from Sicily. So oh, okay. we have to, like, if we bus, it'd be like 17 hours one way. Oh, man. So we're, we're only 30 minutes from an airport and we just fly everywhere. It's fantastic. Oh, okay. That's nice. Yeah. And down the south, food is like a religion too. So you, you probably yeah. got some gnarly Italian food. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the food is amazing. And I learned real fast all the different rules about food. You yeah. Know, never put cheese on fish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The cardinal sin. Don't ever do it. <laughs> cheese on fish. Nope. <laughs> yeah, chance. You got to think accordingly, according to set wines for the different foods you're, drink, you're eating. I mean, it yep. was, it was, I had to bring notepad and just kind of keep it all in track. <laughs> How's your Italian? Did you learn a little bit? I mean, I'm sure you learned a little bit, but. Yeah, I learned a little bit, but I was kind of spoiled. I had a, a really good friend on the team this year, this last year that spoke perfect English and he's Italian. So I just hung out with him everywhere we went. And I didn't, yeah. that was my excuse that I didn't have to learn the language because he, <laughs> he, you know, bailed me out all the time. So. All right, first year I played in Italy, I had two Americans on my team. So, and then we yeah. had, then our setter was a Finnish guy, spoke perfect English. And then most of our Italian guys all spoke really good English too. And our coach spoke, spoke perfect English. So I, I like, I mean, I could order stuff at restaurants and that was it. I didn't speak any Italian. But then what was interesting is my next year, I went to a different team, different club, and um, no one on my team spoke English. Like <laughs> all, all our foreigners, none of them spoke English, but they all spoke perfect Italian. And our, our coach, he spoke English, but he refused to speak English to me. He's like, no, you have to learn Italian. <laughs> and the worst part about it was, oh, man, I'll never forget this. So our team was sponsored by a television channel. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. And like every, every kind of every other month, you had to go on TV <laughs> and, and the person would be there and, I'd be, and I would be there and people would call in and ask you questions about the team and it would all be in Italian. And so like, it was like a perfect storm of like terribleness for me because I was trying to learn and I was doing my part, but I was like, it was a steep learning curve. Right. And so I'm, I'm in this studio and the lights are blaring at me. It's super hot. I'm just dripping with sweat and people are calling in and the connection's really bad. And it's like, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, I, I don't know. So like, I would just do my best. And then I'd come to practice the next day and the guys would heckle me so bad. They would be like, Hey, we saw you on the show last night. And I'd be like, how'd I do? And they're like, people would ask you a question and you would answer a completely different question. <laughs> like there was, it was no sense at all to what you're saying. And I'm like, dude, what do you guys expect? Like, I don't know what I'm talking about. And, I had to do that like three times. It was, I dreaded it so bad. A couple of times I'm like trying to fake that I was sick and it was just, it was awful, yeah. man. But 
I tell you what, though, I learned Italian really fast that year because, you know, like when I went into my third year, I, I was really confident. I'd give all the post-game interviews and everything, and it would all be in fairly fluent Italian. And it's kind of like what you need, right? You need to just kind of jump in the deep end and be like, all right, like, I don't really have a choice here. I got to learn the language because no one's going to talk to me if I don't speak anything. So that was, that's my Italian story. Jeez, <laughs> that's awful. It was gnarly. <laughs> Talk to me about your future a little bit. Where do you, do you see yourself playing indoor as long as you can and then potentially transition? I know you love the beach, transitioning to the beach at some point. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Like I, people, I've, I, you know, you'd be surprised how many times I've gotten that question just because yeah. of how much exposure I've had on the beach and on the indoor. I'm, I'm going to play indoor until my body says no. And then yeah. it's just, it's just like, like Reed is kind of doing it's, Then it's going to, then it'll be the time to transition. Yeah. I tell people all the time that, you know, people in the volleyball community they probably know this a little bit more than the normal person, but just from a financial standpoint, like you make so much more money playing indoor than you can on the beach, especially at a guy at a national team level who's traveling with the team, you know, he's on the national team. You make four, five, six, ten times as much money playing indoor overseas than you can on the beach. I mean, granted, there's the give and the take, right? Because it's a grind playing year after year after year going overseas, but um but from a money standpoint it's it's kind of a no-brainer i mean the beach lifestyle is 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 amazing i know that but you know you you can only make so much money for so for for a a period of time before you're before you you know you can't play volleyball forever so i think you're probably smart if you if you've got teams that are saying hey we want you to be a part of what we're doing and you can do that indoor and you're feeling good then that's yeah, you got to way you gotta to go. the beach to make a consistent living. You got to be so able true. To top three competitors in every single tournament you're cashing out. And that's just, yeah. it's a lot to big gamble on. So totally. Well, um, I want to, I want to uh, do some kind of rapid fire. These are like kind of short pop questions that, right. that you can throw your answers to. The first one's probably the one you're going to have to think about the most. I'm just curious. I ask everyone I interview this question because I'm always fascinated who they choose. So, you gotta you gotta pick your all time indoor team, seven players. Everybody is at the prime of their career. You get to pick who who you're gonna put on the court. Okay. Okay. So okay. think about it. Who are your outsides? Who are your middles? Yeah. Who's your oppo? Who's your setter and your libero? Okay. And you can put yourself on the court too. There's no there's no <laughs> harm in that at all. Yeah, no, I don't know. <laughs> If it were doing all time, I don't know if I'm going on the court yet. <laughs> um, all right, we're definitely taking Soji on the libero. Okay. We're going. Yeah, ball. he's proven himself. He's a baller. Yeah, ball the center for sure. Oh yeah, that's uh, a good choice. Um, Believe me. <laughs> tall center, yeah. Um, Stanley on the oppo, without a doubt. Never seen anything like Clay. I've never seen anybody that could dominate an international match from the service line like like he could yeah uh, i i'm like you guys want to see something incredible go back watch the 08 games our semifinal against russia watch the first two sets when we went up 2-0 we went up 2-0 mostly because clay i mean i think he had like maybe nine aces in the first two sets against <laughs> russia and i remember there i remember the libero who was really good he at one point clay rips another ace and he looks over to their coach and, and looks at him and is like, like, what do you want us to do? Like, do you want us to pull five guys? Because he was hitting the ball so hard with so much range and in all the different seams that he was just like looking at his coach like, I don't know what you want us to do. There's yeah. nothing we can do. Because, I mean, I've seen Clay hit 80-plus with a speed gun in Anaheim on his serve when we were doing serving practice. Like, I don't think people realize what an 80-plus serve looks like. It's gnarly. That's insane. Yeah. Holy so that's a good choice. Yeah. That, well, yeah, without a doubt, him in the court. And then um, I got to throw some love back to Long Beach. Definitely David Lee. Yeah, he's, he's a, a beast, man. Um, I'd say I, I haven't watched – probably Max in the middle. And then yeah. my outsides. Oh, man. I'm going, I'm going Reed just because just he's got the defense and passing. Yeah. Uh, um, and then if we're doing prime, probably maybe between Anderson and Rooney in the, on the outside. Ooh, yeah. That's big. Give us some height. Yeah, both those guys. That's a good question. That's interesting. 
Yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot to choose from. We got a lot of good players in the in the pipeline from, you know, just over the history of USA Volleyball. We just got a lot of good talent. So I, I, I like your team. I think that's a solid team. I'd put that up against anybody. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Have you ever had any, like, near-death experiences? Near-death experiences? No. No? Like that's good. <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> yeah. that continues. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Let's see, if you never got into volleyball, what would you be doing right now? If I, uh, I'd be playing golf. I, I uh, out on the farm, you know, there's six bucks around all with my dad and we'd go every weekend. And just, I was, I was supposed to be a golf golfer before I picked up volleyball. Do you still, do you still play quite a bit? It's hard to find yeah. the time and um, that, and it's super expensive in California. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, to motivate you a little bit um, in 08, after we won gold, um, I was sponsored by Mizuno at the time and I had a contract where I'd have to go to like, um, like prep events and, and media events often. So right after we won, they're like, Hey, we're going to fly you to Atlanta because we need you to do this media thing. And I'm like, all right. So they fly me out to Atlanta. I get there and they're like, we're not, we're not doing a media thing. We're taking you to our golf facility for Mizuno. And we're going to, we're going to have you spend the day with our, with our head fitter. And we're going to design your own special clubs for winning the gold and I was like what so we head out to the Mizuno facility they have this huge technology facility for all their golf equipment and I met their head fitter he puts all the the electrodes on me and I'm, I'm hitting balls and hitting balls and he's showing me different things and they're collecting all this data and he's like all right I think I think we've got what we have I was putting balls everything and then he's like, you know, be on the lookout in a couple of weeks. Your clubs will get there. And he, they designed this oh, full set of custom clubs, everything. It was really, really cool. Wow, that's awesome. Motivation. Motivation <laughs> to get it done next year, my man. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> uh, let's see here. If people had to describe you in one word, what do you hope it would be? One word. For like, for volleyball stuff? No, just in general. Um, people that know you. People that know me. Supportive. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. a good one. What's a what's a trait that you most dislike about yourself? <laughs> probably is definitely hot headed. <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes I think, uncontrollable. I think we could all relate to that. Yeah. How about a trait that you most dislike in other people? Does anything just like irk you? You're just like, Ugh. I don't want to call anybody out. Let's see. No, no, you don't have to call anyone out. Just no, no, a trait. No, no. <laughs> trait. Um, which kind of is hypocritical, but knowing, like, know, know it all kind of like mm-hmm. mindset. So, and so, which yeah. I 100% have done before and will probably do again, but it's one of those things that irks me so much that I want to change it myself. I like that. It's good. Um, dream vacation. Where are you going? To Italy, man. That was my dream before. Really? Because my family uh, airs from the island of Ischia, out oh. in right off Naples, and uh, we actually got I got to take my parents out there this last Christmas. Cool. We, we went to our heritage and went around the island, and it was a blast. So that wow. was my dream vacation right there. Uh, the best pizza I ever had was in Naples because pizza originated in, in Napoli and you can get some really good pizza in Napoli. Yeah, the food all around Italy is just food. Yeah, love that. Uh, I'll save that one because it's connected to the other one. So how about a movie, a movie where you teared up? Oh, man. Uh, Frozen 2. Frozen 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frozen. I mean, Tangled. <laughs> I'm a Disney movie. <laughs> all, all the uh, animated movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll tear you up. Where are you a big – you know, I noticed I was, I was trolling your Instagram feed. You get a lot of Disney stuff. Are you a Disney guy? Yeah, yeah, I am. I have been since – I mean, I, I've probably gone close to maybe 300 times since high school. Yeah. I just, I just Dude, have – That's awesome. Myself and just, just be around that atmosphere. Man, I love I, it. I'm a massive Disney guy as well. My kids really? too. Oh, yeah. So when, when, um, when we first moved the training center to Anaheim, I, I was super stoked, first of all. Because, I mean, we're going from the Colorado Springs 
to Anaheim, which is a big shift, right? And uh, my kids were obviously really excited too. They were younger at that time. They didn't really know too much what was going on. But um, so as soon as we get to Anaheim, we immediately get annual passes. And literally every day while we were training, this would be my day. So I'd wake up, go to practice, you know, uh, whatever it is, relax a little bit, get some therapy, either lift or do whatever else is out after practice and then come home. And, you know, you get your home probably around like, 3.45, 4, 4.30-ish. And I would come home and I'd be like, what do you guys want to do, guys? And they're like, let's go to Disneyland. I'm like, all right. Every single day we would go to that's Disneyland. We would, park at, we would park at the downtown Disney parking, take the monorail in. We'd maybe ride like one or two rides, maybe watch the parade, go get some food, and then, then we bounce. That's all you need right there. That's and perfect. then, so on our, like, you can log into your account and they'll, you know, you have like an annual passport account for Disneyland and it has a tracker on it. And it, every year it tracks how many visits. And I think one year we had like 123 visits. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome. Yeah, that was like the best year of my kids' lives. They always talk about it. That's yeah. cool. You're a Disney guy. Without it. Uh, let's see. Last meal on earth. What, what do you have? Last meal on earth, I'm having my dad's shrimp scampi oh. with his his homemade shrimp scampi and lasagna, without a doubt. Okay. Yeah. Well, homemade I lasagna to get too. Dad huh? Once a year, and it was the, it was the seven hours before Christmas Eve that he would start cooking, and he would just make the best food ever. And uh, without, without without hesitation, that's my last meal. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. All right, let's see here. Um, I want to do like a little bit of like uh, word association. So like, I'm going to say a word and you just tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. okay. Uh, ocean. Sea world. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, genius. Stephen Hawking. Oh yeah. That's a good one. Uh, binge watch. Netflix. Okay. Uh, the Olympics. Man, the first thing that comes to mind was messed up is coronavirus, but that's just oh no, it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> sad, <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> I mean, yeah, with all the tragedy that happened. Oh man, uh, let's see. How about highball? High fingers. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how about sweat? Hot, sunny day in Anaheim. Knucklehead. <laughs> oh, 90% of my teammates. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Uh, how about your happy place? Disneyland. That, yeah. That. <laughs> uh, greatest of all time. Kobe Bryant. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, let's see. Million dollar contract. Anderson. Nice. <laughs> I was like, no hesitation either. Yeah, that was <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Six pack. Uh, someone getting hit in the face. Yeah. <laughs> the only way you can associate six pack in the volleyball world. You ever had any gnarly six packs yourself? Yeah, I had, I mean, playing in the gym, I think it was my senior year of high school. We were doing just like this hitting drill. We're in the, before the summer started. So we're like, we got like six, seven guys. Someone went up. I was, I was like, we were doing like a blocking drill, like outside of Verzapas, something like that. And I go up and I, th I, I don't remember his name. Maybe it was Price. His last name was, I don't know if you remember him. Will, Will, Will Price. Price. Yeah, Will Price. He goes up Will. and absolutely waffles this ball into my face because I'm young. Yeah. I don't have a lot of blocks. So I just go up like this and just absolutely waffles one into my face. <laughs> I go down immediately. I'm like crying. I'm like, my nose is all messed up. Oh, dude. It was oh, man. <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. One time I was playing in Italy and um, I, I, I went up to hit quick. The setter went over me and went quick to the outside to our outside. And then I turned to cover and I was right underneath him. And he just hammered the ball into the block and it came back 
so fast into my face that I didn't have time to blink. So I took it with my eyes open. And then I was like, oh my gosh. And I opened my eyes and everything was red, like red tint. I couldn't like, I had no color distribution in my eyesight. It was oh, all, geez. it had, it had broken all of the blood vessels inside my eyes and my eyes were filled with the, the blood underneath. And it was just, it like was tinting all of my color red. And, and I was like, like I was literally thinking to myself, is this how it's going to be forever? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I go back into the training room and, and like, I'm just like constantly blinking, trying to get things to go back. And it was, it, all I saw was red for like maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then slowly it just started coming back. And I was like, oh my God, thank God. Cause it, that would have been awful. But that was, that was probably my gnarliest six pack. Uh, that's crazy. Gnarly. Um, let's see two more. How about taxes? Got to pay him. Let's do this. Uh, so I'll start with Alan Knight. Okay. Uh, that's, that's the word I'm – Yeah. Okay. Um, father figure. And John Spraw. John Spraw. First thing that comes to mind. Hmm. I don't know. I don't have one. That uh, there's so many different thought processes going through that. He's complex. He's a complex Rival. guy. Or stoic. I'll I'll say stoic. Yeah. Good. <laughs> All right, man. You passed. Nice job. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> TJ, I appreciate you being on the show, man. Uh, oh, wish you all the you luck in in Vibo, and um, you know, it's hopefully this year goes even better than last year, and you guys, you know, whatever it is, get in the playoffs and do some damage and. It'll be fun for you. Enjoy yeah, all yeah. the expended time that you're going to be spending over there. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, the, and take all of it. Thanks, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ryan. It was bl- yeah, bl- no problem, bro. We'll see you later. All right, thanks, guys. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Yes, sir. See ya. All right, bye.